We're going to start out by talking about my solution for programming assignment number one. As you recall, you're responsible for identifying all the various to-do markers in the code and then filling in your implementations. Please make sure in the future, by the way, that you don't make any changes or comment out or remove the to-do markers. Those should be left where they are so it's easier for the peer assessors to figure out where to start looking at what you've done. So the first batch of to-do requests occur in the onCreate method, which goes ahead and calls up to the superclass as always to do the various initialization. Then there's a call to the set content view. This is also very standard to make the main activity be the default layout. And finally, we go ahead and cache the M URL edit text by getting the, the edit text that's part of the, the layout file. Uh, some people were a little confused by the word cache. We could have used the word store or stash. It would have meant the same thing. It meant just store this, this uh, item so we can get it quickly without having to go back through the find view by ID call every time we need to access it. The method where everything starts is the download image method. As you can see here, this takes a view which corresponds to the button that was pressed, which in this case would be the download image button. We first hide the keyboard that was given to you. Then you go ahead and make a call to the make download image intent factory method, passing in the URL. And we'll take a look at the get URL and make download image intent methods in a second. And assuming that that's filled out correctly, you get back an intent, which is intended to be an implicit intent. And that intent is then sent to the start activity for result method, which will go ahead and start up the download image activity, passing in the download image request code, which is used to indicate which request this corresponds to. Let's go down and kind of split the screen here. We'll go down and take a look at download image intent or make download image intent, which is a factory method. As you can see here, it just returns an intent that uses the action web search action and the URL that we will get in a second. I'll show you how that works. Upon further reflection, I probably should have picked a different intent than action web search. And uh, you're, you were probably were right to, to think that was a weird choice. It just happened to be the one that came to mind when I was first implementing this. But there are other better choices, and we'll talk about those later. Let's now go take a look at the get URL method. In this particular method, we first parse the input, if any, that the user has passed to us. We go ahead and check to see whether the input is valid or not. If it's not valid, we, if it's not a valid URL, we just go ahead and return and pop up a toast saying that the, in, the URL is invalid. Uh, otherwise, if the user didn't provide a URL, then we'll use the default version, and that gets passed back or we'll take back a validated URL. And in this case, it really just means to be valid, just means that it's syntactically correct. So nothing more profound than that. Assuming everything goes as planned, start activity for result. We'll go ahead and call the download image activity. And download image activity, as you can see here, is an activity. And it's on create hook method will get called, which goes ahead and calls up to its superclass as always. The next thing we do here is we go ahead and we get the URL that corresponds to the intent data that was passed in as a result of the make download image activity intent, which was created by the factory earlier. The next thing we do is we come down here and we create a new runnable, which we call download image task. And this runnable contains a single hook method called run, which of course will get called back in a background thread once we have started it. And what this does is it goes ahead and calls download image on the URL to download the image. We then check to see whether or not the download operation worked or not. If we get back a null, that means it's, it failed. And so we set the result to result canceled. Otherwise, we set it to result OK. We then go ahead and set the result of the activity to be the result code, as well as adding in a new intent that will contain the image path, if any, that corresponds to the image that was downloaded. Now, notice that I do both of those things. I, I download the file in the background thread. I check to see if the image pass, path is null in the background thread. And I set the result in the background thread. I don't have to do it there. I could move it here. I could take this whole chunk of code here and move it down inside here. But I just decided to keep it here just uh, because that way it'll all run a little bit more concurrently. The last thing I do inside this run hook method 
is I go ahead and make a new runnable, a new anonymous inner class instance, and its run method will call finish, which will go ahead and basically cause this activity to stop. And that will then, of course, return the value back to the main activity. Here is the uh, place where we create a new thread to run this download Im image task in the background, and we call it start method. So this will go ahead and be launched and will start to run. And then the code here will be run, the code inside of run, and all those steps we just saw will take place. As you can see, we set the result to the result of the image path, and we also set the result code. And when all those things complete, control will return to the main activity via this on activity result hook method. And the first thing we do is we check to see whether or not the activity worked. If it did work, we're going to do a few things. But if it didn't work, if the result code was result canceled, we go ahead and pop up a toast and say that uh, the URL that was requested failed to download. Here's what happens when things go well. If the request code corresponded to download image request, which it needed to in this example because that's the only one we're using, then we go ahead and call make gallery intent, which we'll look at in a second, and then we'll go ahead and start the activity. Let's take a look at make gallery intent. Here's make gallery intent. This is a factory method. You can see it goes ahead and it makes a new intent with an action view action. And it uses the so-called fluid interface style of intents, which then return an intent. And then we call set data and type, passing in the path to the image file that we're going to be displaying via the gallery application. And set data and image type also return an intent. So that whole thing gets sent back here as the intent. And then we go ahead and we return this. In fact, if we wanted to be even more concise, we just could have said this. We could have said this code. That's probably an even better way to do it. Just return the intent. Here's another way to do it where we go ahead and use a new file in order to be able to get the appropriate path as opposed to doing a prefix, which is file colon slash slash. So that's basically how we make the gallery intent. And if we come back over here, you can see that as soon as the gallery intent is made, we go ahead and launch the activity, and that should display it. The final thing I'll talk about, just a real quick little helper class, is called Lifecycle Logging Activity. And Lifecycle Logging Activity just prints out information about the various hook methods that are getting called back, which makes it very easy to be able to tell at a glance when you look in your, in your uh, log cat what's getting called and when. So you can see the order in which the hook methods get called, starting with uh, on create, followed by on start, followed by on resume. And then when things go away, you'll see on pause, on stop, and then potentially on destroy getting called as well. This class is so useful that it's probably not a bad idea to use it for many things. For example, we could also come along and say, this is going to inherit from lifecycle logging activity. But that's not strictly required for the purposes of evaluating this program. You can just uh, leave it with activity as it was done before. So that's basically the solution that I came up with for my implementation. And uh, this, as you can see, uses the Hammer framework. It really just uses the, the R part of the Hammer framework because it creates a new runnable, and then it passes that runnable to run on UI thread. And if you go back and watch the videos that we recorded uh, from week number two, where we talk about posting and processing runnables in the Hammer framework, you'll see that run on UI thread under the hood uses a handler inside of the activity class implementation, and it goes ahead and posts to that handler, which then does all the processing in the background, and it leads to come back to the, to the UI thread. So that's basically the implementation. I hope that's helpful. And now we'll go ahead and take some questions.